we have with us Dr. Rachel Rubin. Uh, she is the co-lead and the senior medical officer for the Cook County Department of Public Health. Uh, she will uh, give a brief statement um, about our masking guidance, and then she will take your questions. We do ask you to put your questions in the comment box. If they need clarification, we might ask them to speak up, but we're trying to keep everybody quiet on for the sake of recording quality. Um, so Dr. Rubin, you take the floor and I will disappear. Thank you, uh, Tom. Um, I am Dr. Rachel Rubin. I am one of the co-leads of the Cook County Department of Public Health. And we wanted to uh, brief everybody about our uh, new guidance um, uh, to be in alignment with the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention uh, related to uh, uh, universal masking, basically, for individuals uh, indoors. I, um, we are now seeing a significant number of new cases on a daily basis. We have reached that 50, uh, more than 50 people identified with new cases of COVID uh, per 100,000 population on a, on a seven day average. So it goes up and down each day, but over the last seven days, our daily average has been um, about 51 to 52 people per 100,000. And according to the CDC's guidelines, this puts us into a category called uh, significant community spread of uh, COVID-19. And what is recommended is to go and step back to what the CDC had been recommending for everybody a couple of months ago before things were loosened up a little bit, which means that everybody, whether you're vaccinated or not, should be masked indoors in public uh, places, not in your own home, obviously, and amongst people that you live with, but certainly in uh, any sort of indoor uh, public space, whether that's a restaurant or bar or retail store, uh, a uh, community event, a private event um, in an event space, basically that indoors you should be masked um, whether you're vaccinated or not. And that's because there's significant community spread, meaning that even if you're vaccinated, there is the small chance that you could get COVID from somebody who is not vaccinated that has COVID. Um, even though your case may, you are almost certainly going to have a very mild or even asymptomatic case, and then you can spread that on to people who are not vaccinated. And uh, we know with the Delta variant, which is the main concern that we have right now, that's the majority of our new cases are the Delta variant. It's much more highly contagious than the other variants, at least twice as contagious, which means you don't have to be next to somebody for that long a period before you can get enough of the virus uh, in your system that you can develop um, COVID disease, um, either symptomatic or asymptomatic. So the best way, of course, to stop the spread of COVID is to get vaccinated. And if we had more people vaccinated, hopefully our numbers wouldn't have reached this level, but our numbers are continuing to go up. It's extremely worrisome. And so we are putting in place in to be consistent with uh, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention is that everybody should be vaccinated when they are indoors in a public space. In addition, um, we recommend that if you're outdoors in a large crowded space and you have an underlying immune compromising condition, you may wanna choose to mask in those situations as well outdoors. And nobody should be ostracized or discouraged from masking if they want to in whatever situation. The state and many counties are averaging more cases than they were a year ago at this time, but hospitalizations now are half what they were then, and deaths are about a third from this from that time. Can you talk a bit about why that is happening? Yeah, thank you so much for that question. Um, <clears throat> the main uh, individuals that have not been vaccinated up to this point, um, predominantly, are in our younger decades of life. So obviously children under the age of 12, but those in their 20s, 30s, and early 40s. So these are generally individuals that overall have a lower proportion of chronic disease and illness and um, are less likely to have severe cases of COVID. Um, so our, that's the reason we are, that's what we think the, re, the main reason is, is why we're not seeing significant hospitalization increases. So we are seeing some and we are not seeing certainly a significant number of deaths, especially compared to the same time um, a year ago, for sure. 
Um, and this is because generally speaking, uh, healthy people, healthier individuals are getting infected with COVID, but that doesn't mean that they can't spread it to somebody else that is um, potentially at risk for getting severe complications. And also as people are learning more and more with what we're calling long COVID or long haulers is that even when you have a very mild case of COVID, say a little bit of a loss of smell or taste, feeling under the weather for a few days, that some of these individuals do have long-term symptoms and become a long COVID case and can have significant decrease in their quality of life, even when they've had a mild acute case of COVID. Okay, what about Lollapalooza? It's a large outdoor gathering. You know, um, Lollapalooza is in the city of Chicago. Um, in fact, I am a city resident myself, and that's under the jurisdiction of the Chicago Department of Public Health. So I might defer questions related to Lollapalooza to my, my colleagues in the city Department of Public Health. But just one thing to say is that they are screening everybody. And from what I can tell is that everybody on site is vaccinated or has shown proof of having a negative test within the prior 72 hours of coming in to the, uh, the festival space. Um, and we also know that the disease is much less transmitted in outdoor environments. However, if you're in this large congregate uh, setting where there are a lot of people very close together, um, it could also be prudent to put a mask on even at Lollapalooza, even if you're vaccinated. But the hope is, is that it will not become a super, super spreader event because the city has done whatever, it, whatever it's been able to, to make sure that people that enter the space are vaccinated or have tested negative. With phase five, you're out of the quote unquote state of emergency status, that's correct. So is this mask advisory able to become a mask requirement or uh, that's not legally possible right now? At this point, we're putting this out as an advisory. Um, the ability and desire to enforce indoor masking at all of our facilities now and, and, and establishments that are allowed to be opened for the first time in a year um, is really a daunting task to be able to, to monitor all of these facilities. So we're really hoping for appropriate community support from employers and management and workers and uh, uh, clients, um, guests in all of the open venues that we have now in the public space um, indoors to cooperate and to follow this guidance. Um, in the future, we can certainly investigate putting in place a uh, legal order um, that would then be potentially enforceable. Um, but at this point, that is not um, what we are planning on doing. Will you be mandating maskings for all in schools? Yes, our school guidance came out last week, and we are reiterating that this week as that masking guidance is now expanded to all indoor spaces, spaces not just schools. And so it is being, again, it's a high recommendation. The state has made it clear that each school district can make their own decision about masking, but they, as we, are highly recommending that everybody that enters the school, whether you have been masked, uh, vaccinated or not, should be masked indoors. And then there's specific guidance for certain kinds of uh, athletic and other activities outdoors. But generally speaking, indoors, everybody in schools um, needs to be masked. How concerned are you that suburbanites at Lola will bring the virus back home? I'm concerned that anybody that goes to Lola can bring it back home, whether they live in the city. It's interesting listening to the news this morning. There are people that have come from all over the country to go to Lollapalooza. Not just people that live in the suburbs or live in the city, but people from, you know, Nevada and Colorado and Florida. Um, and New York, you know, have come into Chicago for Lollapalooza um, and everybody needs to be careful. Um, so am I worried that, that this could become a super spreader event and it could spread to any number of places throughout the country, including suburban Cook? Yeah, I do have some worry about that. But like I had said before, I think that the city is doing absolutely the best they can to make sure that uh, Lollapalooza is conducted in the safest way possible. Business owners tell us the recommendation does not carry any real weight and that people may not comply. Do you worry without a mandate this will create more problems? So why not with the Delta variant being so contagious, 
make it a mandate and not just a recommendation. Um, eventually, we may end up having to make it a mandate. That is the next step. That takes a little bit more time. It takes some uh, writing an official order, getting the appropriate legal backing in order to be able to do that. Um, we're hoping that we get the appropriate cooperation that we have had all along from the Restaurant Emergence Association, the Illinois Restaurant Association, the Brewers Association. Everybody has been incredibly cooperative uh, in uh, in terms of these trade organizations and trying to push out the appropriate guidance to their uh, to their membership. And we are hoping, therefore, that basically it makes it easier for restaurants and bars. Instead of just letting people in and trusting that those that are not vaccinated will put on a mask and that those that are vaccinated come in without it on this way, you can just say, I'm not letting you into my store. I'm not letting you into my restaurant unless you remain masked obviously, unless you are, you are eating or drinking at that time. So it, it, to me, it makes it even easier to just say, hey, this is our rules now. This is what we're doing. Everybody that comes into this establishment uh, needs to have a mask. Will you mandate masks in schools regardless of vaccination status? Um, the strong guidance right now is that everybody needs to be masked in schools, whether you're vaccinated or not. Can you please restate the new update? You said everyone needs to be vaccinated indoors, but I think you meant to stay masked, not vaccinated. Yes, I apologize if I misspoke. The new guidance very uh, to make it clear is that there is universal masking for indoor public locations, meaning that whether you have been vaccinated or not, you need to remain masked inside indoor establishments. Some districts are not planning to require masks for even unvaccinated people, including the entire population under 12. Is this dangerous to those unvaccinated? Absolutely. It's extremely dangerous to those unvaccinated, and it's dangerous for those, even if it's a young person who's likely to get a mild case of it, a, a, an eight-year-old, they could bring it home to a grandparent that is immune compromised and maybe the vaccine doesn't work as well on them as somebody else and then they get COVID again or they get COVID and they get very sick. It's very dangerous and we're gonna to begin to see spread of COVID um, in these, in or around these, school, uh, these schools that are not mandating vaccine, uh, not mandating vaccination for people above 12, which I think would be appropriate, but more importantly that they're not mandating masking in the schools. Is it as contagious as smallpox Ebola? You know, this morning I was uh, listening uh, to a news report and they are suggesting that it could be as contagious as chickenpox, which is sort of a, a cousin of smallpox, uh, meaning it's, uh, it's very easily uh, acquired through airborne route, um, which probably means up till now we've been saying a 15 uh, minute uh, cumulative exposure to somebody that's positive if you're not vaccinated and you've been exposed to them within a six foot radius, uh, that probably this means is that you can get the uh, disease even uh, contract COVID even in less than that 15 minute um, time of exposure. Um, I'm not sure that it can travel further in the air than other variants, but it takes less uh, time to get a sufficient, what we call a viral load, to get exposed to enough of the virus that it then precipitates um, a COVID infection. Many schools are using the recommendations as optional. Most districts have said masks not required. What do you say to them? What I say is should doesn't mean optional. Should means this is something that is recommended to keep yourself, your families, your communities safe. And so when we say that you need to have masks indoors, even if it's not stamped into law, this is what's considered best public health practice to keep us all safe. More contagious even outdoors. Um, I think it's probably more contagious even outdoors, but outdoors is so much better in terms of avoiding uh, contracting uh, COVID than indoors because there's sort of constant air exchanges. You're not in an enclosed space where you have to rely on the ventilation system to move the air around. Um, so being outdoors, um, we've been found, is that it's, it's incrementally less likely to get COVID um, outdoors. Does it mean it's impossible to contract it outdoors when you're standing next to somebody for a long period of time? Uh, probably you can still get it that way, but it's much 
easier to get it if you're indoors. Can you explain the higher viral load of Delta variant and why the masking guidance is changing due to the transmissibility? Um, it's, it's more contagious. It's just more easy to spread. So you need less. Um, I'm not exactly sure. I don't know, let's just say, the aerodynamics of the Delta uh, variant compared to other variants in terms of how many viral particles can become suspended in the air when somebody coughs, for example. Um, I don't think that they necessarily linger in the air longer, but it's, there, it's sort of like it's more potent. It might take less viral particles for you to inhale in order to get a disease, or there are more viral particles, it multiplies faster so that there are more viral particles in somebody's exhaled breath if they have COVID uh, with Delta variant versus something else. But like I said, I don't really know the aerodynamics of it. We do know that it's just much easier to get it um, and to develop a high viral load that's necessary to develop actual COVID disease. Which studies are being used to show that masks are working? I saw a lot showing they are actually not healthy to wear for a long time, but not much about safety for masks. Um, I haven't read studies that have shown that it's not uh, healthy to wear a mask for a long period of time. What's important is that if you wear a, a disposable mask, which is what I do, I change it every day. Or if I'm wearing it all day long, I might change it more than once a day. Um, if you're wearing a cloth mask, they should be washed every day. So you need to have a few of them and you wash them. Um, there are many, many studies out there that have shown that masking has made a tremendous difference. At first we thought masking protected an individual if they are positive with COVID and transmitting it to others because it acts to a large extent as a filter. So many, not all, but many of the particles are trapped by the mask. Certainly if you're wearing an N95 respirator mask in a, in a healthcare institution, but even with the cloth masks uh, and the surgical masks that are multi-layered, seem to trap a large proportion of the viral particles. But what we have also learned over time is that masks also protect you to a large extent from getting COVID uh, from somebody else. Even if you're not wearing the N95 respirator, you're actually wearing just you know the surgical mask that it protects you from getting COVID from somebody else. So it's in both directions. And there have been numerous studies that have shown this. I mean, even just anecdotally, I have not had a cold in a year, year and a half, because I've been wearing a mask all the time. So I haven't, that's why our flu season was probably quite uh, low key compared to other uh, flu seasons. And this was worldwide. And we think that that's probably, again, because of masking and people staying indoors uh, during the height of the COVID surges. When we are with children under like 10 years old, should we be wearing our masks continually? I think the children need to be wearing masks continually. Um, if you, uh, I think that's the important thing is that if you're outdoors, the children between the ages of two and 12 should be masked. If you have been vaccinated and you're outdoors um, and you're visiting, for example, with your, your grandchildren um, and they are, or your children's, your nieces and nephews, um, the, and you're outdoors. I think things are relatively safe outdoors, but the children should be wearing masks. Any thoughts on what happened in India where Delta was so devastating and then faded away despite very low vaccination rates? You know, I was reading a, a report about that last night. We don't really know why. It's, it's sort of shocking. Also in the UK, they had a very high surge with Delta and now it has dropped precipitously. Um, we don't really know why that is. It seems to be, it might be somehow the natural history or natural progression of the disease. But we also know that uh, major interventions were put in place as these uh, rises in Delta um, came about in India and the UK. And so I think it's probably a combination of the characteristic of the natural history of this particular variant um, uh, combined with the appropriate uh, interventions that were put in place in terms of uh, vaccinations, uh, masking, and physical distancing. Should people keep children out of public like stores? Um, no, put a mask on if you're indoors. I mean, I know I had said before, you know, if these young children are outside playing around, they need to have masks on. You know, I may back up on that. I think that if they're outdoor and running around, um, that they don't need to wear masks unless they're you know, on top of each other. Um, I think that um, 
indoors for sure. It means when you go into a store and you're bringing your child with you, put a mask on them. Okay, thank you everybody.